Now, last night, I talked about how the federal government is in no hurry to open up our international borders. Despite vaccine rollouts, despite our successful hotel quarantine scheme, Scott Morrison and his government are talking up closed borders, talking down the need to open them up and looking every bit like their upcoming election campaign, probably later this year or maybe early next, it looks like their campaign will emulate the campaigns of Mark McGowan in Western Australia, Australia and Anastasia Palaszczuk in Queensland. You know the pack drill. These are scary times. We are the ones keeping you safe. We're keeping the virus at bay. Vote for us or things might get even more scary. It'll work, make no mistake. But just because I recognise the political sense of this strategy doesn't mean I think it's right, nor do I think it's... Uh, it, uh, nor, nor do I like what it says, I suppose, about our country. One of the big problems with this debate is that politically there is no debate, no opposition, state or federal, Liberal or Labor, has been prepared to oppose any measure, any lockdown, any restriction that anyone claims will help fight the virus. And so the paranoia has only grown all year. I showed you yesterday the Prime Minister actually said the pandemic is worse now than it was a year ago, which is just absurd. We have vaccines. We have better treatments. We know more. We have much lower fatality rates. We have Europe and the US now opening up under vaccines and moving on. One of the things I really detest about this mindset is the way it turns people against each other. You know the sort of thing. There are people in this country criticising others who get the virus, complaining that they went to too many shops, spread it around too much, people demanding that others wear masks when they're out and about, or people showing absolutely no regard for their fellow Australians in India barred from returning to their own country. Well, here's another example. A Herald Sun article in Melbourne today revealed the numbers of people who have been given permits to leave Australia over the past year. I still find this hard to get my head around, that you need to get government permission to leave this country now. But anyway, this report revealed that nearly 14,000 people have left Australia and come back and then left again and come back multiple times. And some people are outraged at this. People have left and come back for all kinds of reasons, for their jobs, because of crucial family matters, to help others. Who knows? The point is, they have to get government permission to do it. I know. I, I did this last year myself when I went to the US to cover the election at the height of the pandemic and I came back through quarantine. There's two weeks I'll never get back. But my point is, who would resent this? No one can go without permission, without having a decent reason. No one is forcing anyone else to go overseas. And anyone who goes has to come back through quarantine. And not only go through quarantine, but pay for it themselves. Yet people in this country are complaining about this, that others have been allowed to do it more than once. They're so scared and paranoid that they resent others leaving Australia and coming back. Even the minister says she doesn't like it. Home Affairs Minister Karen Andrews said she was concerned about these figures and that she's directed the Australian Border Force to provide her with advice on how outbound travel exemptions can be tightened. Really? The safety of Australians is my top priority, she says, and while we're in this, the midst of this pandemic, travel restrictions are necessary to mitigate the risk. Yeah, she says there's too many permits. You have to get a permit. You have to go through quarantine on the way back. What's the problem? We should be letting more people travel, not fewer. We should have more quarantine places to allow this. This is terrible stuff. This is all about politics, not about public health concerns. And it doesn't say good things about the intelligence or tolerance in our public debate, does it? Or the resilience of our country.